thanks again for your time. I know everybody's busy and um, it is uh, difficult to tar carve out time in your day. So welcome again to the uh, webinar between Reality AI and Present Devices on automated anomaly detection using sound. So uh, there, there'll be four of us speaking. Uh, Nalan and I will be speaking at the uh, beginning of the presentation, kind of lending the background. Um, uh, Nalan, you can introduce yourself. Uh, uh, I'm Mark Hunsinger. I'm VP of Sales and Marketing at Prescient Devices. Hey, everyone. My name is Nalan, and I run business development here at Reality AI. Yep. And uh, uh, Sham and Ashish will be uh, uh, on the technical side running our, our demos and uh, the fun part of the webinar at the end, and they'll introduce themselves when they uh, jump on. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, there are really six key topics, including a Q&A session at the end that I mentioned. Uh, the first is, uh, uh, now I'll talk about Reality AI and how their technology powers Edge AI. Uh, I'll give an intro to uh, Prescient devices and uh, how we realize the value of industrial IoT at scale. Uh, now I'll talk a little bit more about uh, anomaly detection and specifically about uh, uh, the Reality Check AD product. And then we'll segue to the engineering folks to do the live demo. And uh, you know, with that live demo, uh, we'll demo the Reality Check AD product as well as the Prescient Devices Container Management System. So Nalan, if you wanna take it from here and talk a little bit about Reality AI. Thanks, Mark. Um, so we'll start off with a quick intro to Reality AI. Uh, we focus on providing edge AI software for advanced sensing in embedded industrial IoT systems. Next slide. So our proprietary approach combines advanced signal processing with machine learning techniques for optimal feature extraction on sensor data sets. The resulting machine learning models are lightweight enough to be deployed in commodity hardware, including say 32-bit microcontroller-based systems such as the ARM Cortex-M series. So effectively uh, efficient, cost-effective machine learning deployments. Next slide. And here's an overview of our product offerings. In 2017, we released Reality AI Tools, an automated machine learning platform for creating, validating, and deploying sensor classification or prediction models at scale in target embedded devices of your choice. Since then, we've leveraged this core software platform to create market-specific solutions in the mobility and industrial segments. Um, and relevant to today's discussion, we'll touch upon Reality Check AD, which is our full turnkey solution for automated anomaly detection of equipment in manufacturing and production process operations, uh, built in partnership with Advantech, Prescient Devices, and Fujitsu Components. Next slide. Customers are today using our software in a variety of applications, including, uh, for example, building smart self-diagnosing air conditioners, which incorporate contact microphones to predict, uh, to predict potential failures so they can be serviced. Uh, also predicting unhealthy tires in vehicle fleets by incorporating acoustic sensors in the wheel well. A condition monitoring and predictive maintenance of critical assets such as cyclones and pumps in mining operations as well as quality assurance applications, such as acoustic end of line testing of assembled automotive components before vehicles are shipped out of the uh, manufacturing facility. Next slide. All right, thanks, Nalan. So uh, thanks for the intro on Reality AI. I'll talk for a few minutes about uh, present devices and what we do. So. Uh, we help our customers realize the value of industrial IoT at scale very quickly. Um, and so how do we do that? We have uh, uh, our, our key product is a, uh, uh, a product called Present Designer, and it's an intelligent uh, low-code platform to build flexible edge-to-cloud data solutions. Often we can help our customers get to a pilot project from a concept in two weeks uh, and, and a lot of times less. And uh, it, it can be our customers that do the development. We have a professional services group that does the development as well. And uh, you know, even after the pilot project begins, 
uh, the solution is very customizable and changes can be incorporated into the uh, experimentation phase of the IoT development, if you will, in, in 24 hours or less. So it's a very flexible and fast solution. Uh, we've helped about 50 companies and that list is growing on a daily basis to go through their industrial IoT journey. Uh, we've got a tremendous amount of both system experience and hardware experience. And uh, that comes in very handy because We've developed solutions for all sorts of edge devices, including industrial computers, PLCs, uh, GPUs, all sorts of stuff. And that's a real advantage that we have in that, uh, you know, we have experience with all those hardware platforms. We've been in the IoT space for 10 years and uh, have uh, half a million devices deployed and uh, counting there as well. So let's drill into a little bit more about what we do. We, um, we work with data from any source anywhere. And uh, so how do we do that? We, we rapidly create and deploy these solutions, as I mentioned before. And because our solution is so flexible, uh, those solutions can evolve with your business. Uh, we work with data from any source, as I said. But uh, the other cool thing is that uh, you can work with this data in the cloud, on an edge device, both in combination and uh, with present designer, it's very easy to change where you work with the data as you're experimenting. And then finally, we empower both operational folks and IT folks uh, to unlock the value of data and drive innovation. So what are the key applications that we get involved in? Um, the first and most popular right now is remote monitoring. This is a, a fairly basic application, um, but when our customers are starting their IoT journey, uh, all they want to do is monitor some things, synthesize and analyze some data, and integrate things into a dashboard in the cloud. And so uh, we actually have a, a solution template that allows you to uh, to do that very easily. Uh, the second application is data analytics. Um, you know, often our customers, uh, we have a set, subset of customers that, that want to uh, stream time series data, put it in a database for analysis, uh, machine learning. Uh, and again, this could be at an edge device or in the cloud, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have another set of customers that, that uh, are running machine vision applications, capturing imaging from cameras, uh, often using a machine learning algorithm which resides in the edge device to detect features and defects. And only when those defects are detected does the information go back through uh, a communications link to the cloud for an analysis or an alarm. And then finally, uh, managing data pipelines, you know, again, because our solution is so flexible, we can extract and transform and analyze data in any form for visual, visualization, analysis, et cetera, and, and then put that data in a, in a data lake, a warehouse, some AI engine, uh, you know, be, again, because of the flexibility of our solution, uh, we can do that as well. So a couple of quick use cases. The first is uh, with a, a, a large chemical dispensing company who wanted to take their existing solution and get it to the next level and monitor a hundred physical parameters at their customers and scale their solution to 200 sites, really integrating themselves with their customers. Um, we worked with a partner and the, the, in this case, the partner application engineer was able to develop the, uh, the entire solution in two months on a part-time basis, saving this uh, chemical company eight months of development time and $300,000 in development cost. And, and because of that savings of development time, uh, they were able to get to market uh, much sooner and generate recurring revenue uh, uh, in, a, in a much faster uh, basis. The second use case here is uh, I referred to our data uh, uh, capabilities. You know, again, we can take data from any source, process it, pre-process it, post-process it, um, before and after it goes into an AI 
engine in this case. Uh, so we can acquire it, format it, uh, and do all the data analytics very flexibly with our solution. So let's transition a little bit and talk about the partnership that we have, uh, Prussian Devices with Reality AI. Um, now I'm going to talk more specifically about the Reality Check AD product. But uh, when uh, when we uh, you know we've known Reality AI for for a while, and uh, with the um, with the Reality Check AD product came the need for a solution that was flexible and scalable that they could take their technology and optimize it and deploy it uh, in an easy way. So uh, we were able with our prescient designer platform to come up with a container management solution, which you'll see a demo of later, uh, for them to use within a two week time frame, as I alluded to before. And that solution is evolving, it's flexible, uh, you know, works out of the box and, uh, you know, again, we we are helping uh, manage the solution, but uh, you know, in the future, uh, Reality AI uh, can easily manage that solution as well. So, with that, I will turn it back over to Nalan to uh, take us to the next step. Okay, great, thanks. So, let's start off with talking about some uh, best practices for anomaly detection. Um, we're sharing some insights based on some of our experiences uh, implementing anomaly detection in the right way, I guess. Next slide. So what exactly is anomaly detection? In machine learning terms and problems, we can approach it in a couple of different ways. The first being a one-sided model, that, that is we only learn what normal is for the equipment of interest and report deviations. The second approach is unsupervised learning, which doesn't require data on anomalies to train on. Um, here at Reality AI, we use the one-sided model as we believe the unsupervised methods tend to be better suited for other applications such as goal-oriented uh, gaming applications and such, whereas as opposed to doing sensor-based anomaly detection. Um, in common terms, you could think of anomaly detection as a magic wand where it's difficult or expensive to get data on the thing you really want to detect. Uh, but please do remember it's math, not magic. Next slide. In terms of implementation, it's all about the baseline. So anomaly detection methods find a baseline normal region in a feature space, as you can see from this uh, graph here. And we have anomaly detection scores that tell you how far an observation is from the normal region. Now, the key to implementing a robust anomaly detection solution is to find the right feature space in that data set, right? So to, number one, establish a good normal baseline which is compact and tightly packed, as you can see in the blue cluster there. Uh, and also feature spaces uh, for known anomalies that are distant from the edges of that baseline, as you can see in the red cluster there. Next slide. Yeah. So let's talk about some common missteps when trying to implement anomaly detection, right? The first misstep would be building without any hints or anomaly data at all. So for example, hints could even be as simple as just collecting data before scheduled maintenance. So we have some idea of deviation from normal. It doesn't have to be a specific labeled signature or condition, uh, but we do want to give some hints to the model, which is also effective when you want to validate that your anomaly detection model is actually working as opposed to always showing normal operation, right? Uh, the second being, uh, the approach to gathering and testing data, uh, right? You want to try and expand beyond doing gathering and testing data in limited control circumstances. At the end of the day, machine learning is an exercise in overcoming variation uh, under various operating conditions, right? So you want to gather and test data continuously and iteratively so you can screen out false positives and false negatives. And finally, you want to use instrumentation uh, that allows you to extract the right or optimal feature spaces for to recognize the right types of signatures. So using instrumentation that misses the data that matters most, for example, is a very common uh, misstep in uh, anomaly detection. So for example, just using RMS values or peak to peak values or FFT values from a vibration sensor may not be effective at all, uh, as opposed to using raw rich time waveform data directly from the sensor that allows us to extract optimal feature spaces. 
Next slide. And as this excellent example from another domain shows, uh, descriptive, descriptive stats uh, or aggregate stats often don't let you see the most interesting things, right? So here you have 13 different plots with the same X and Y mean, same X and Y standard deviation and X and Y correlation. But with the wrong instrumentation, there could be a dinosaur in your data and you'll never even see it, right? Without the ability to look at all of the source uh, detail or the rich time waveform information, your algorithm would never see any of those patterns, in, these patterns in your data. Next slide. And here's uh, our recommended approach uh, to anomaly detection. Uh, so we'd start off by building and deploying an initial baseline version zero model, right? And then, for example, have a human in the loop or effective feedback mechanism for uh, continuous testing and improvement over time. Uh, when, when this deployed baseline model initially reports anomalies, oftentimes these anomalies uh, may not be a real anomaly. For example, we could be encountering a normal uh, condition, but a different type of normal that wasn't encountered when we built that baseline, right? So in that case, you want to be able to have that feedback mechanism to add to the baseline and retrain um, to improve that model. Now, if the baseline model reports a real anomaly, we have the option to also label it um, so the model can classify that specific condition in the future. Now, uh, extending that a bit further, effectively, you can start using anomaly detection mechanisms as a great way to, in fact, bootstrap collection of labeled data sets in the future as well. Next slide. So we've implemented all these approaches in our reality check AD solution uh, for manufacturing and production process operations. Uh, this system can, number one, detect anomalies from critical assets in real time, uh, predict uh, remaining useful life of equipment. So servicing can be scheduled only when necessary. Track unproductive assets. So for example, an asset might be uh, just idle or unintentionally idle in a sense, right? In many of these operating environments, manufacturing facilities and such, they tend to be, it tends to be a very noisy, uh, a very noisy environment, uh, high variation targets and such. In such environments, it could be difficult to know about unproductive assets uh, as well. And uh, we can actually detect idle time and state uh, tracking on those scenarios as well. And finally, you want to be able to use anomaly detection for quality assurance. For example, uh, automated end of line testing of assembled components using sound uh, to ensure those components are functional before shipping them out. And reality check AD is able to uh, basically uh, provide an effective mechanism to do all these things in one out of the box turnkey solution. Here's an arch uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Here's an architectural overview of the reality check AD solution, which we'll be demonstrating live in a few minutes. Uh, so it consists of an edge node, which is an embedded compute device from Advantech, preloaded with our reality check AD software. We provide a variety of sensor options, including contact mics, free field mics, vibration sensors, and others uh, configured based on the specific application need or equipment uh, to monitor. Reality check AD automatically learns baseline of normal at, at the edge itself in the edge node, uh, which is often then used to construct an anomaly detection model or a classifier models uh, in reality AI tools, which are then pushed back into the edge node for real time inferencing on monitoring at the edge. So to summarize, we do both learning at the edge as well as inference at the edge. Um, so we don't need to send any raw streaming sensor information um, to the cloud, um, uh, only when we detect things of interest is when we could send that information over a network to the cloud, for example, if you want to monitor that. Now, Reality Check AD also automates, uh, completely automates device provisioning and management. So we are leveraging patient devices, uh, device and container management software to effectively do that. This really allows us to scale easily for production deployments and also makes the experience uh, fairly seamless to the end customer in terms of uh, device management and provisioning. Uh, finally, we offer a suite of APIs. Uh, so status can be integrated to customer dashboard or workflow systems. We can capture anomaly information when needed and enable human in the loop feedback when required as well. 
And with that, I'll hand it over to uh, Ashish uh, to talk about uh, the architecture from the question devices side. All right, uh, thanks, Nalin, and thanks, Mark. Uh, that was great. Uh, hello, everyone, and thanks for being here. I am Ashish, I'm the director of software at Question Devices. And I've got a cold, so I might sound a bit congested. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, all right, uh, so before going to the demo, I would like to spend a few minutes uh, talking about our architecture and where Pression Designer uh, or Pression Devices sits in the solution. Uh, so Reality Air has this amazing anomaly detection uh, software. So that runs on edge devices. It can run on few devices. It can run on thousands of edge devices. So the problem is managing these uh, devices. So, uh, so this is where uh, Pression comes in, right? So with Pression, Reality AI can access those edge devices. They can manage all the application containers. Uh, in a single platform, uh, which is basically a web application. So updating a container, uh, spinning container down, um, uh, following the container logs is as easy as clicking a few buttons on the website. So if you look at the diagram, uh, so here, uh, edge, so here the edge devices are running uh, oppression edge and they're also running Docker and uh, the pressure designer is running on the cloud and uh, we also have a pressure dashboard. So what they do here is that it's not just a communication pipeline. You can, uh, you can program your devices from the designer and you can add pre and post processing functions. Uh, you can pass data between sensors. You can pass data from the sensors to the cloud. So, in, but in this particular scenario, we are using our container management template uh, to manage reality AI applications, the edge. So you can see the two screen grabs uh, of the dashboard and of the design on the top right. I'll go through them in details uh, during the demo part, but uh, this flow is very simple. It's highly customizable, it's scalable, it's flexible, and it's secure. Uh, so with that said, I'll hand the mic over to Sean for the exciting demo uh, we have for you. Thank you. Right, thank, thank you so much, Ashish. Hey all, I'm uh, Sham. I'm the Director of Engineering here at Reality AI. Good afternoon, good morning. Uh, all right, ready for the most exciting part of the webinar? Uh, we are here to do a demo. So what I'll be doing is I'll be demoing the Reality AI's Reality Check AD solution. Um, as Nalan was mentioning a few minutes ago, uh, anomaly detection at the edge is an iterative process. So what I wanted to drive today was three basic points via this demo. You'll see in the next few minutes how we can build an anomaly detection model how we run that model and how we can iterate on that model and retrain on false positives. So if you can allow me to share my screen here. Uh, right. So what you're seeing here um, is the Reality AI tools. This is our flagship product. Um, this is where you, know, you can load sensor data, you can extract features, build machine learning models, and then export this as a code to be deployed onto microcontrollers or edge devices. Now, all of this can, you know, runs on the cloud. Now, this is a separate product. If you wanna demo that, it's available on YouTube or just feel free to ping us and we'll, we'll get in touch with you. But today, I'm gonna to be focusing on the Reality Check AD aspect of uh, Reality AI. Um, so let me focus your attention here. All right, so, as you can see here, there are two devices uh, in this particular account. Um, today we'll be dealing with uh, reality demo. As it turns out, it's actually offline, it's in standby. So let's fix that. Uh, we will use Prescient to actually boot it up. All right, uh, so this is the dashboard for the container management uh, that I talked about earlier. And you can see uh, from the dashboard that this has many options. You can select multiple devices. Uh, you can list images, you can list containers. And in this particular scenario, Sham is switching on a container uh, uh, on one of the edge devices. So shortly you'll see container appear on the Reality AD uh, application. Awesome, there you go, thank you. So yeah, what, what you just saw was, you know, we are using uh, Prescient's container management solution to really manage all of our edge devices in the field. Um, and, uh, you know, we are containerized, we are dockerized, we run everything in Docker. So um, I'm using the container management solution from Prescient to start up the Docker container. Now that it's actually online, let me take you all for a moment to a factory floor, all right? 
So we're in a factory shop floor. We have a conveyor belt. Um, as engineers, our task today is to actually build an anomaly detection model. All right. So let us actually go ahead and I'm going to switch cameras here. Um, so you should be able to see the setup here. <laughs> okay. What I have here is um, a small uh, demo conveyor, of course, and uh, you, we have the edge device and I'll get into the more of the setup a little bit later, but for now I'm just gonna start it on, right? So this is running. As it's running, if you can bring your attention back to my screen, my uh, screen share, I'm gonna actually learn normal. Let's say we'll learn normal for the default 30 seconds. Uh, we're gonna sample the high fidelity data, the waveform data, as Nalan was saying, at a, at a thousand hertz. Uh, so this is not aggregated, this is all you know, thousand hertz data. We are going to actually go ahead and create a new model today. So let's just call it learn normal v10. Our window size is gonna be 512 and our train step is gonna be 128. We have one sensor connected and we'll get to more about that later. I'm gonna update device. So what's happening right now, uh, this will take about 30 seconds, as you know, we said. So the status right now is um, 30 seconds. So uh, let me just uh, walk you through what's happening. Okay, in the meantime. So let me bring your attention to the camera here and show you we have, um, actually, let me just go and stop share screen share so you can actually see my camera a little better, All right? So what we have is a conveyor belt. We have a fidget accelerometer, which is a small you know, accelerometer that is basically detecting the vibrations on this uh, conveyor belt. It is feeding all of the data through a USB to my edge device by Advantech. Um, and we collect, again, as Nalan was mentioning, not RMS or FFT, but we're actually collecting the uh, raw sensor data to build this anomaly detection model. So let's actually go ahead and see if the model is ready. Uh, so back to our screen, it's, it's, it's still running. Uh, so, you know, typically takes about uh, 30 seconds uh, to complete. And once it completes, it's actually going to let the cloud know through MQTT that, hey, I'm done learning. So I'm ready to be run. Um, so if you would maybe just refresh the screen here, we'll see that it's done. All right. So what we just did there was we basically uh, learned normal for 30 seconds and we built that machine learning model. Now, let's actually go ahead and put that model into activity monitoring. That is basically learning the model, right? This is the model that we just built, November 18. Um, we're gonna select this as well as Using our flagship product, we had previously built a classifier uh, on the cloud using the sensor data that we collected. So I'm gonna run both the AD model that we just built as well as a classifier on the edge device itself, all right? Okay, now that it's an activity monitoring, we're gonna go ahead and see what my uh, graphs look like. What is it reporting? So what you see here is um, the AD model that's running as well as the classifier, right? And it's actually reporting anomaly scores every second and we're getting data from the device onto the cloud every second. Now, this is a dashboard solution that we built. You can build your own dashboarding solution. We integrate via MQTT. If you have an existing dashboard solution, we can easily integrate with that. Um, and we, um, yeah, you know, we got that here. Now, let me go ahead and actually trigger an anomaly. So what you see here, if I can bring your attention to the camera, is just a small uh, Raspberry Pi, which basically triggers different states with the conveyor belt. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and put that in a belt stick mode. So imagine, you know, in our shop floor, the conveyor, something is stuck at the end of the conveyor and it's actually in a false state. There you go. Now, ideally, uh, this should actually detect an anomaly and report it to the cloud, which is exactly what's happening. So the classifier is reporting, hey, something's up with your conveyor belt. It's actually in a belt stick mode. The anomaly detection model is also de detecting uh, a few anomalies here and there. You know, you might see an, a few normals in between because it is actually running normal for like a brief second, if you notice that. So what we can do 
is let me just go ahead and actually put this back into idle, meaning I'm going to turn it off. So the conveyor is actually off now. So ideally what should happen now is everything should be an anomaly because we trained on um, the conveyor running, right? So idle, which is, you know, which is the conveyor not running is detected as an anomaly, which is exactly what's happening. Our conveyor, uh, sorry, our AD model is showing an anomaly and our classifier is showing that it's an idle. It's, it's fairly easy to correct that, right? Like this is the last step here. So we, we learned, you know, in the last few minutes, we saw how we built the model. We saw how we ran the model. Now the last step that I'm gonna show you is how we can iterate on the model. So we're gonna go ahead and actually relearn or append to our existing model. So this is the model that we built. We're gonna add 30 seconds more of data to this model where we're gonna train it on idle. Um, meaning the conveyor is off right now uh, and we're going to add to, the, to our existing anomaly detection model and we're gonna train teach it what idle looks like. While that's running, let me take you to the last page that I have uh, on here, which is anomaly reviews. So this is where you know one would come to, to do that iterative aspect of the anomaly detection, right? So, you know, in the last few minutes, 12.32 and a couple of minutes ago, we actually detected an anomaly. Uh, we actually collect raw sensor data uh, during that brief anomaly period and upload it to S3. Uh, so you have all, our, all the uh, raw sensor data uh, up there, you know, available for you to um, analyze. You can actually look at the waveform and see, you know, how that looks like. You can add some metadata to it. Um, I think Nalan, you mentioned that uh, somewhere briefly in a presentation that you could use this potentially down the road to build classifiers and that's the exact idea, right? So now that you have collected so much data, you can actually add you know, uh, a key value pair to it, add some metadata and then I can actually uh, build a classifier using a flagship product on it. Now, uh, let me see, the last thing I wanna show you here is if let's say, you know, we were running the conveyor and it detected an anomaly, it wasn't actually quite an anomaly. This is the human in the loop that Nalan mentioned. So we can actually go ahead and assign normal and retrain uh, for that specific uh, anomaly that, that we just saw, okay? So meaning we are telling the anomaly detection model that like, hey, that anomaly that you just saw, is actually not quite an anomaly. So add it to your baseline. And from in the future, we won't actually mark that as an anomaly, right? So let's go ahead and see, you know, how right, our um, learn normal has completed. So ideally what should happen now is our model now knows that the conveyor being off is actually also okay, it's normal. So I'm gonna put it back into activity monitoring. And now we should see, you know, we previously we were seeing everything as anomalies, but now we should see uh, that as normal as well. There you go. And the gap that you see here is the gap where uh, we weren't running the machine learning model. We were actually uh, learning a normal during this particular period. So the classifier reports idle and the AD model reports normal. If I were to put the uh, conveyor back on, it should report normal because it knows that it's also normal. There might be a brief anomaly just, you know, when it's actually turning on and that's okay. And maybe we can, you know, in the future retrain uh, the model that like, hey, that's also okay. Um, as you can see, the class classifier is saying, okay, it, it actually switched from idle to normal. Um, and yeah, that is with the demo. Now back to you. Ashish. All right, uh, awesome. All right, thanks a lot, Chab. That demo was really cool. Uh, and that setup is really fancy, love it. Uh, all right, so we're back at the Kadir management template here. Now, one thing to uh, I would like to point out is that uh, container management is not the only thing that pressure uh, devices does. Uh, so container management is one of the templates that we provide uh, and we have multiple templates ranging from machine vision to uh, HDR acquisition, uh, other, other templates that support uh, multiple sensors. 
So please uh, get in touch with us if you'd like to uh, get a demo. Uh, we'll be happy to set this up for you. Now back to the container management. So uh, now uh, this is the container management dashboard out of the box. So you uh, can associate devices to this template. Uh, you can select devices, you can select a single device, or you can select multiple devices. So I have a JSON selected right now. I can list images on the device. I can list the running containers or all the containers on the device. And if I want, I can also follow the logs of, uh, let's say I want to follow the log of this container with this ID. I can just uh, hit container logs and I'm now following container logs. Similarly, I can stop following the container logs and I can execute any Docker commands from Docker Compose. You can build images in this. Uh, and uh, so this is the container management uh, solution. And coming to its design, because this whole thing is built on top of Node-RED, it's very simple, it's very uh, scalable, it's flexible. And Prussian designer, is, uh, you can think of it as like a your whole data processing pipeline. So you can just drag in and uh, draw uh, blocks to do other things. So if you look at this flow, this is the container management flow. So this one block is the block that's actually running on the edge devices. So what Sham was uh, just uh, uh, demoing. Uh, so this block, that block was running on his edge device as a prescient edge application. And that was managing the reality uh, AI containers. So if you want to add like extra features to the block, let's say you want to add a pre-processing -pre pipeline uh, to this uh, to the solution. You can drag in a subflow and you can just attach the wires and you have a pre-processing pipeline. So let's say you're coming back to the cloud, uh, you can add a post-processing pipeline as well. Uh, I mean, wherever you want, you can add like an influx. Uh, I think I have an influx node. Yeah, you can send the data instead of displaying it on the dashboard. You can send the data out directly to influx database uh, or any other data lake uh, from Snowflake to MySQL. You can do further processing of the data there. Uh, so I hope I was able to cover some of the features that we offer. Uh, so again, free feel to get in touch with us. If you'd like to uh, get a demo account, we'll be happy to set one up for you. Uh, with that said, I'll hand the mic over to Mark for some closing remarks and we'll open it up for Q&A. Thank you. Thanks, Ashish. And thanks, Sean. That was that was terrific. Um, appreciate it. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, we do have some uh, time for Q and A. Um, you know, we have gotten uh, some questions through uh, some uh, through the chat uh, to the panelists. So um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Sean Ashish, if you want to uh, handle some of these. Uh, the first question was, uh, where do you build the model? Uh, is it on the edge in the cloud or or where is the the model running? Yeah, hey, uh, that's a great question. So um, we, for this particular demo, the model was built both on the edge, the anomaly detection model was built like right now, I tried to use the webinar in 30 seconds. Uh, but we also build models on the cloud uh, using a flagship product, which is Reality AI tools. Um, Typically, we build more classifiers there, uh, and the anomaly detection model we build on the edge. That's great, thank you. Uh, let's see, another question. Uh, what sensors do you currently support? Not, and I'm not sure, feel free to jump in uh, if you want to add stuff there, but uh, I did forget to mention about the sensors. So um, actually, if I can switch my cameras a little bit. So the one that's actually connected to this is a fidget. Uh, it's, it's an accelerometer. Um, we do uh, support accelerometers and microphones and any, you know, uh, standard microphones or contact microphones. Um, we do intend to support uh, humidity and temperature sensors and any other uh, sort of signal-based uh, sensors in the future. Uh, but we also support like radars. So uh, radars, accelerometers, um, microphones, anything to add there, Nalan? Yeah, just, uh, just to expand on that, the specific sensor that we select will depend on your exact application need and deployment uh, environment conditions. So for example, 
uh, we have actually created partnerships with census vendors, sensor vendors uh, for different applications. So uh, it'll be fairly transparent to the end customer. It'll all be in one, one single turnkey package. But uh, for example, if you happen to be in an explosion proof deployment scenario, uh, we have sensors that can handle that. If you have, uh, for some reason, a need for a sensor that uh, cannot be attached to the machine you want to monitor, maybe it's too hot or some other reasons, uh, we also have the option of doing a, a contactless Doppler-based vibration sensing. Um, in other cases, we obviously use things like microphones, contact microphones, free field microphones. So oftentimes when you want to do quality assurance based on sound, um, think of a scenario where oftentimes you have a human expert listening to assembled products like air conditioners in the manufacturing facility before they ship it out. Um, uh, we can actually automate that with acoustic sensors uh, and a machine learning model that basically um, teaches the system uh, how to look for uh, functional issues in the assembled product before it's shipped out for quality assurance. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, let's see, another question about the types of edge devices uh, you support. I can I can take that as well from a prescient standpoint. Ashish, uh, you want to comment as well? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, right now we don't support uh, microcontrollers, uh, but that's in works. Uh, but we support any device or any gateway uh, 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 with like a half a gigabyte of RAM. I mean, that should be more than enough to run prescient uh, on the edge. Uh, yeah, anything you wanna add, Mark? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, we've worked because of our hardware experience, we've worked with uh, edge standard edge computers from uh, Advantex name was mentioned earlier, those types of devices. Uh, we've worked with combined uh, PLC edge computing devices from uh, from folks like uh, Bosch and Wago and uh, Phoenix Contact, for example, and then uh, uh, you know G GPU types of devices from Nvidia as well. In the reality AI side, um, you, you know, we pr primarily support for the AD, uh, reality check AD. Uh, we, we support any uh, Linux based uh, 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 you know, edge device uh, right now. Uh, we, we have partnered with Advantech uh, and, you know, we also support uh, Raspberry Pis. Uh, but uh, with a flagship product, you know, microcontrollers and, you know, <laughs> that's predominantly what we'd, we'd be working with. So, uh, Nalan, I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. One of the advantages for Reality Check AD, this uh, turnkey anomaly detection solution, um, we have created a tight integration with uh, Advantech in this case, uh, in the sense that it can be an out of the box experience for the customer, where the software, working with Advantech, we've created a mechanism where our software images can be preloaded. Uh, you could literally scan a QR code when you receive the device and uh, provision. Uh, devices and such. Um, so we've kind of made that seamless through partnership with Advantic. Um, but of course, if for some reason the implementation needs to be on uh, some specific existing hardware that you have that uh, may be on a different uh, platform, uh, we should be able to support that as well. Great. Uh, let's see, one final question here. Uh, someone asked about uh container management, Docker Compose, that might be something for you, Ashish, maybe to handle? Yeah, so the question is if we support Docker container, uh, Docker Compose or other Docker commands in the management template. And yes, uh, we do. So you can build, you can also build images uh, on the S devices. Uh, you can run any Docker Compose commands. Uh, so yeah, any Docker custom commands is supported on the uh, container management template. I mean, there's a block to write the actual commands. Uh, so you're free, free to do anything on the device when it comes to, yeah, managing the container. Great. Yeah. Um, that is all the questions I see. So uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll close it out then. I'll, I'll share my screen real quick. So uh, just, just in conclusion, first of all, thanks everybody for, for attending. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Again, I know you're, you're busy and, and, uh, uh, and, and we do appreciate it. Um, 
if if anybody has any questions or or wants a, a consultation, um, you, you know, Nolan's contact information and mine is at the bottom of the page here. Uh, you know, we're happy to set up a consultation, uh, either of us on uh, any number of topics, and you can talk directly to our our development teams, and we're happy to uh, to uh, explore any uh, any applications and and projects you. Uh, you have that, uh, and we're happy to, to help help you solve those. Um, and then finally, um, I will uh, put in a uh, a bit of a a bit of a plug for the next webinar in our webinar series uh, coming up on uh, December fifteenth um, with our partner NCD. Uh, wireless sensors are becoming uh, very very popular in the marketplace now in industrial applications. Uh, they used to be pretty hard to use. Now they're not. Um, NCD is a market leader in this space. And uh, so uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us on December 15th, where we'll demonstrate uh, a number of solutions and show how, uh, how we can work with these, uh, these wireless sensors uh, and integrate them with our, our low code product. With that, um, I, uh, again, thanks everybody, really appreciate it. And uh, um, uh, thanks to all of our presenters as well, Nalan, Sham, uh, Ashish, uh, we appreciate your time as well. So uh, with that, we will sign off and hope everybody has a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.